Hi everybody, my name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto Under 20. How are you today? Are you keeping your keto program simple? Honestly, when I listen to some people, they get into such scientific hoopla. And, um, you know, if you're the two keto dudes, I love it. And I listen to them for confirmation about how great being on the keto food plan is. But um, we can just do, you know, some people, or, or maybe I, I shouldn't be sounding like I'm knocking it, some people um, make sure that every meal that they have is balanced with their fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. They wouldn't dream of just at the end of the day what it looks like with their carbs. Um, I guess I'm not that way. Um, right now I'm in a run of having the same pretty much breakfast and, and dinner, um, except for steak night, and, um, you know, I've never really separated to see what the macro, um, breakdown is, but some people do that, but I just kind of keep it simple. I don't do keto, keto, uh, ketone strips or the breath one or the blood one, um, and obviously the pee one. I, I just don't, um, I don't sweat the small stuff. I just keep those carbs under 20, and I won't say that the rest is gravy, but the rest is pretty much making sure I get enough fat so I go from meal to meal. Sometimes I will have a decaf coffee in the middle of those two, um, the two meals, and I'll put like coconut butter or, or pasture-raised butter in it just to um, get that little boost of fat to keep it all going. And um, it all works for me. So yesterday I was at my 12-step meeting, and um, there it's this thing called commitment. And when it's a commitment, it's a group that comes from another town, and there's a bunch of them, and they each speak a number of minutes. And so the first one up, Greg counted 68 ums in uh, the first f in, um, <laughs> the first five minutes of his story. And I'm sitting here thinking, well, I thought I was the queen of ums, but this guy must have the king of ums wrapped. You know what I'm saying, saying? He also said, you know, quite a few times. So, as much as, and I say so. I say so, and I say um. Maybe I say you know. Um, but I love my keto, and that's why I'm listening to this. And I was listening to a woman that was talking about this horrible bloat that she had, and it was really um, kind of awful for her, and she didn't like it. And as she did what she ate in the day, there were lots of telltale places that when you listen to some of the doctors, they talk about what could cause bloat. And, um, you know, I was hearing the culprits and everything, and, and um, we each figure out what works for us as we go along. Now, for some people, a um, major thing is not just bloating, but it's also gas. And for some of us, that is uh, telltale things like broccoli and um, big time um, for a lot of us. And what would be, I can't think of what the other one was. It was just there, but it just floated, just floated away. Um, so anyway, and then listening to Dr. Gundry, I am so sorry for miswriting, mispronouncing, missaying his name. I was putting R's everywhere they were supposed to go. R, R, R. And it's very, very interesting because he talks about the seeds. And as a young child, he never had um, tomato sauce without, um, well, at that point, his mother blanching the tomatoes, peeling the skin, and taking out all the seeds. To him, that was a normal tomato sauce. And I did not grow up like that. My mother was not a sauce cooker anyway, but any jar or anything that I've ever had, I've always just assumed it's chopped up whole tomatoes, and that's what I buy. But by the time he's done talking, you know, I'm not sure if we're supposed to be peeling our cucumbers and pulling out the seeds and then just having a little bit of the uh, veggie flesh left to eat. So anyway, that's why I keep suggesting him, because it's a very provocative sort of thing, and um, I know that the older I got, that um, onions and garlic just just don't really work out for me that much anymore. 
and so I've cut way back on them and I called them nightshades and um, and um, Judy corrected me and said that they're alliums, alliums, however you pronounce it. But so how how crazy do you get with your keto or do you just keep it simple? I know for me if I'm not making a recipe that it's a much better situation for me. If it's like grilled meat, baked meat, sauteed meat, um, like a burger, um, like chicken thighs, like a pork chop, and then I just have it with the salad. Same thing with the eggs. I'll have eggs with some cheese on my Swiss chard with some protein on the side and it makes me just happy. Um, I'm lucky to be very satisfied and satiated with those things. How about you? Do you get bored? Do you find you need to add more, more, more of something or dabble with recipes and concoctions in order to be able to do this? Are you easily um, just kind of, you know, bored and restless with it after a couple of weeks? Or do you find that the simplicity just makes it so much easier and that you enjoy the rich taste of just a simpler keto um, food plan. For a lot of us coming from the standard American diet, we are so used to the chemical salt and chemical tasting cheeses and, you know, all the fake foods, talk about fake news, uh, the fake foods, that it takes us a while to develop a palate to have something like broccoli or um, spinach with just a pat of real butter on it or to have um, a salad with evu on it, you know, extra virgin olive oil instead of a uh, commercially made salad dressing that might have all those chemicals in it. It's, it's very, very fascinating. And for some of us, it's just finally, there's something, this works. I'm not bloated this summer. I'm really enjoying this. And um, after watching food hauls, you get ideas. I just watched um, Esther from No Excuse Girl do a food prep for 20 minutes. She makes it look so easy and interesting and she was so prepared. I really enjoyed it. Um, so it, it makes me want to um, do the same sort of thing. And she's good for four days of having the same thing. I can't do that with Greg, but I could do it with me. Um, so, you know, you have to honor the people that you live with too, how much they can do and whatnot. So, how simple do you keep your keto? And is it under 20? Um, I know a few of you out there, Rochelle, and even myself on occasion, I have more carbs than the 20 total carbs. Um, because when I add in the Swiss chard, it, it bumps me from like 18 or something to the young 20s of counting them. Um, I don't sweat that sort of stuff anymore. I used to be strict, 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 but I assume I'm on maintenance, so if I'm having Swiss chard for my first meal of the day underneath my eggs, that it's not a deal breaker for me, and I don't seem to be suffering any ill effects. And I like the organic Swiss chard with those beautiful neon stalks. It's great. So, anyway, just a little chit-chat about how simple you can keep it. Are you happy with the simple? Or do you find yourself getting bored and restless after a little while and tempted to go on the dark side where you would have to have a true confession with Sarah? Have a wonderful day, my pickles. So good to talk to you, and I love your comments. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.